strength. A mental and physical edge. He got more. Jiu-jitsu is a sport that has plenty of benefits both in and out of the gym and for all ages. Black Bear fans will be seeing double this season at Alfond Arena with the Welke Twins. At Pucker Brush Primitive Gathering, learning bow and arrow is just the beginning. Fighting out of Young's MMA via Orrington, Maine, Glory the Fury Watson. Kickoff from the herd between Mina and Red River is coming up at 7 o'clock, and these tailgates will move up to Jim Hill Middle School when we're up there at Dwayne Carlson Stadium. You guys ready for the game? <laughs> Nodak Speedway has been silent since the start of the coronavirus pandemic, but that's about to change. Thanks, Joe. This storm has postponed many events around the Minot area. Sports are no different. It's really amazing the level of commitment that's required for high school athletes in North Dakota that are a part of co-op teams. Take MLS GKB baseball, for example. Players from six different towns that aren't really close to each other at all all need to go to Lansford to practice and play their games. That's 51 miles east of Bow Bells. 34 miles east of Kenmare. 15 miles south of Mohawk. Now try 34 miles southeast of Sherwood, nearly to the Canadian border, and 16 miles northwest of Glenburn. By the way, teammates from Glenburn and Bowbells live 68 miles away from each other. Bangor Rams boys lacrosse team has a head coach who's been addicted to the sport since his college days at Maine Farmington. Michael Kimes' passion for the game comes out with his excitement when he's leading his team. I stopped by Cameron Stadium to find out more. You're not tired. You're not tired at all. Go. Michael Keim has brought the energy as head coach of the Bangor Rams boys lacrosse team since 2017. When you're coaching, you have to bring it every day. You have to show your players that you're excited about it. And if uh, and if you're not excited about what you're doing, then how are you going to motivate the players? Nice. Nice. Hey. You hit the ball, you have to make a pass. The Rams say Kimes' voice has been huge for the team's success. He speaks his mind, and he really tells us what we need to work on in various crazy ways, and I think it brings the best out of us. It keeps it light. Sarge, pop! He's hilarious. On and off the field, he's not afraid to uh, tell us how it is, be honest, you know. It, it, it helps, for sure. Ready, said go. Kimes' upbringing helped his voice. A skier versus a hockey guy, this should be interesting. When I was growing up, I, I sung in a church choir. Yeah, roll away. So I use my diaphragm quite a bit. When I use my head voice, I, it's gone. Brooksy, what are you doing? But if I use my diaphragm and my whole body, it's great. I'm on it. Ball! Kime jumps in on the drills, too. Release! Who doesn't want to beat their coach in a drill? He goes just as hard as we do and pushes us to go harder than him. Did I really drop that? Okay, Miles, don't be a hungry hippo. Push on the hip. If he's doing it better than us, then it's probably not going to be a good thing. It motivates us to work harder every day. That's what happens when you're fancy. Simple, stupid works. There's only one, Coach Kime. My mind races pretty quick. I'm bored. Get out. Get out. But everything is there for a reason. If it isn't broken, don't fix it. There you go. Scoop. Roll away! When I'm teaching the game and I'm teaching the players how to be men and seeing those light bulbs go off on and off the field. Ready, set, go! That does it for me. Come on, Kanye! The players hope to cap off the season with a state championship to convince Kime to shave his beard he's sported since 2015. <laughs> Kime says his beard is part of who he is, though, so that'd be quite a feat for the Rams, in addition to, of course, winning a state title. Coach added that he limits his caffeine and keeps his voice going with plenty of water on game day. Also, he was running those practice drills barefooted. What a fun voice to follow for the Bangor players. The Great Maine Lumberjack Show is back for its 27th year in Trenton. I stopped by to meet Timber Tina Shear and the Lumberjacks from the show to learn why outdoor sports and Maine's timber history matter to them. Timber Tina Shear's Great Maine Lumberjack Show brings entertainment and a history lesson to Trenton. We highlight not only the skills of the modern day lumberjack, but the history of how we got to be here. Our sport is like rodeo in the fact that it started out when our country was being settled. If I could go back in time, I'd go to a Maine logging camp because I'd want to see what it smelled like, what the work day was like. I'd love to go back and experience what that would have been like. Ellsworth's Jordan Camber comes from a family of six generations of timber workers. He was hooked quickly and joined the show. I asked, I said, can I climb the poles? She says, you have to climb the poles. And she got me a set of gaffs and the rope and said, well, let's see what you got. The daily rain or shine summer show keeps the crew guessing. Every night, you know, it, it's something new. 
It can be something in the crowd or something that happens on stage, you know, and we can just run with it. Um, you know, it's, it's a real competition atmosphere and we love to just, you know, get after each other and try to beat each other, you know. Showing a snapshot back in time to American settlers. Come enjoy the Great Man Lumberjack Show. It's a great time. Yo-ho. Shear grew up with her family's Wisconsin Lumberjack Show. She said her camping trip through Quebec, Maine, and Niagara Falls when she was 12 years old sold her on bringing a Lumberjack Show to the Pine Tree State, along with Maine's logging history, the Paul Bunyan story, and Acadia tourism. Check out MaineLumberjack.com for more information on the show. NFL tight end and current Maine assistant sports performance coach is showing high school players how to train for their upcoming seasons at his gym. I checked out the spot at 10 Miller Street in Bangor to learn more about how to build the tank. Northern Maine strength is teaching a never give up mentality. Truly it's that I, you gotta push yourself mindset. No matter what, you gotta keep on going. And if you fail, don't. Simple as that. You just gotta keep on pushing. You're exhausted. You've been playing basically all game long, and you just you gotta keep on going. The gym's mission statement is build the tank. We're building something that it's not gonna break down. It's gonna have great longevity. It's gonna be able to go through anything. So when the kids hear the word, you know, the the phrase build the tank, that's, I hope that they remember those things. These high schoolers are putting in the necessary off-season work with NFL players. You can't just show up and play football. You have to train for it. If you just show up, you're going to get mauled every time. Seeing some of these guys come in and help me and push me and make me the best athlete that I can be is really, really important to me. I wish there was stuff like this around when I was in high school. This is what these kids need in this area to improve their game here first and then on the field. They're looking forward to results this fall. Come on, you if I'm going to be able to play at a varsity level of high school football and succeed, I need to be stronger than the guy in front of me. I want to get my technique down and keep on pushing my body, so that means that when, I, when that first snap goes off, I'm hitting as hard as possible. Very good, very good. Northern Maine strength, a mental and physical edge. He got more! Yeah. <laughs> you can find out more by visiting Northern Maine Strength's Facebook page, and I cannot feel my arms. Playoff soccer is underway. In Class A, number two Bangor hosted number seven Oxford Hills in a North Quarter Final matchup. The winner would draw number three Camden Hills in the next round. Bangor's Anna Connors with a dangerous run, but she pushes it past the far post. Rams in again. Lily Chandler cuts against the grain, but Sage Winslow meets her there and clears the ball away. Bangor free kick on the edge of the box. Emmy Streams takes a low shot, but Madeline Harris Eric is all over it. Connors breaks through for Bangor. She caps it off with the opening goal of the match. The Rams add another to advance past the Vikings. Class B number three, Prescott Isle hosting number six, Ellsworth. Fans donning Believe in Yourselves number 19 shirts honoring umpy coach Aaron Marston, who passed away last week. Corner kick for the Wildcats, Olivia Locke touches it to Olivia Kohlbacher. She crosses in, Astra Lawton with the header. Home crowd going crazy. Crazy as the Wildcats go up one. The Eagles would not give in after that. Morgan Clifford sends a pass forward to Elizabeth Bowles. Wildcat defender on her, able to block her off just enough to score the Eagles players on the sideline on their feet as the game is tied up at one. Both teams would score again to go 2-2 into OT, but with two minutes left in the first overtime, Locke firing a long strike for the game winner, she would be the hero for the Presque Isle Wildcats. Players storming the field. What a game by both teams in this one. Presque Isle with a 3-2 OT win to move on to the Class B North semifinal. Class C, number two, MCI hosting number seven, Penquist Valley. This one was all Huskies. Early first half, Olivia Varney tries to power one through a crowd. Rebound to Omnia Braley. Goes the opposite post for the goal, 1-0. Later in the half, Emma Burr, defenders all all over, doesn't matter, rifles it to the back of the net. MCI steamrolls Penquist Valley. Varney finished with eight goals, including her 50th of the season. Northern Maine, Class B field hockey playoffs. Eight, Old Town at number one. Lawrence picking up third quarter. Loose ball in, the in front of the cage. Lawrence's Maddie Niles is there to clean it up. Goal makes it 
five zip Bulldogs. Later in the third, Niles again. Nice touch off the crosser from Allison Higgins. Another one in the back of the cage as the Bulldogs stay undefeated. They prevail 9 to 0 over Old Town. Around the postseason, Messalonski and Oxford Hills moved on in Class A field hockey. Belfast and Foxcroft Academy advanced two. College field hockey saw Bates triple up Colby. The Winslow boys soccer team got past Oceanside in Class B playoffs. Class A North winners in girls soccer are Brunswick, Mount Blue, Camden Hills, and Bangor. In Class B, Herman has no problem with John Babst. Prescott Iowa will meet Old Town in the next round. Finally, in college soccer, the Bates men's team defeated Colby while the women's teams tied. Stay with TV5 for continuing playoff coverage, plus a local look tomorrow into former Maine baseball player Jeremy Pena winning ALCS MVP. Tom, back to you.